This is Joseph Coco. I'm at ATCAF 2017 on behalf of Becky Holborn's Art Process School. If you could introduce yourself, Zach. Oh, hi. I didn't see you there. <laughs> I'm Zach Giolongo. I'm a cartoonist, and uh, I'm here at A2 Cat. Okay. Moment, look in the lens or at you? Either it's like annoying fine. if I look at you, right? I should look at the lens because it's more of an intimate connection. That's right. <laughs> uh, so what brings you to A2CAF this year? You were here last year, right? I was. Uh, this is, I don't know what number A2CAF this is for me. Um, I am good friends with Jersey Droz and Ann Droz, and um, they were the ones that originally said, you know, why don't you come to the show? And so here I am. And it's been great. And I've gotten to do uh, quick draws, and I've gotten to do um, Iron Cartoonist, which is a drawing competition event that I put on. And we've uh, hosted the award show every year. Fantastic. Wow. That's been great. Uh, so what got you involved in um, doing, I, obviously the, the artists who come to the show uh, have to do some sort of workshop, uh, workshop or quick draw or something like that. Uh, what got you involved in the award show, if you don't mind me asking? Um, so You're just Jer a good public speaker, so Jersey roped you in? <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> um, Jersey and I, along with Ben Hackey and Lucy Bellwood, have a podcast called The Galaxy of Super Adventure, yeah. um, where we talk about storytelling and being an artist and you know taxes. creative and taxes and <laughs> all that fun stuff. But it is also kind of a radio drama, radio theater, where we're on a spaceship with lots of different characters. So Jersey had an idea of what if as a podcast within this world that we've created, what if we hosted the award ceremony together? And so we did that last year, and that's how it started. And then uh, we did it again this year. So just got back from it, actually, and it was, it was a good time. It went well. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like you guys have a blast at uh, Galaxy of Super Adventures, so I'm, I'm yeah. sure you do uh, hosting the awards as well. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's like the show kind of come to life. And, you know, we record uh, different parts of the country, so it's always nice when we can actually get together yeah, face and to face. Uh, be face-to-face. -face. Yeah, you definitely seem like a face-to-face -face sort of crowd. So yeah. I can say that for sure. Um, so we actually talked to Ben Hackey last year. Uh, he seemed pressed for time, so it was great that he could talk to us, and it's also great that uh, we're able to talk to you. Um, so, do you, are you local to the Michigan area? Sorry, no, no, I live in Massachusetts. Okay. So how far you flew in? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we flew in. <laughs> Not an impossible drive, but it is yeah. a long drive. Okay. Yeah. And uh, would would you advise other artists who are considering coming to the show that um, it, do you think it's worth it for an artist to fly to the event? Uh, personally, Becca uh, makes decent money at the show. It's um, it might not be a show where you're going to be pulling in great numbers, but um, right. in our experience, it's, for the community alone, it's definitely worth uh, coming out here. But what's been your experience? Uh, that, I would say that's my experience too. You know, I mean, I don't know if you know. Frankly, I don't know if if an artist is going to make, like, you know, their their yearly salary here. Yeah. Um, but the, the the crowd is is really interested in, like, what you're doing as an individual. Yeah, the kids are just curious. Like, they come yeah, up and it, it doesn't have to be Marvel or DC. They just exactly. want to know what you're doing. Right. Um, and it's, it's also great because it's just such a good... Crew of the, the the cartoonists and artists that are here, it can be really kind of creatively recharging. I think for a lot of us, especially if you're working, you know, alone in your basement, like a lot of us do. Yeah, uh, listening so to podcast or music all day. Right. Yeah. Right. So um, yeah, it's definitely worth it, even just even just for that. And if you've never been to Ann Arbor, like Ann Arbor is a really beautiful little city. There's a lot of cool stuff happening, and uh, yeah, it's groovy. Okay, and can you tell me a little bit about some of your work? Um, I know you've been doing a fair amount of Star Wars properties lately. Yeah. Um, I don't think I've seen Star Wars doodles before. Uh, it's just something you put out yourself, or this is published? Uh, oh, no, no, no. This is published by Disney. Okay. Um, so it's a doodle book where, as I put it, I start the drawing, you have to finish it. Yeah. Um, and actually, the second one just came out um, oh, in the so UK. <laughs> and so uh, <laughs> it'll be coming out in the US at some point. I don't know. So maybe like a hybrid sort of situation. Huh. Yeah. And, but yeah, I, I draw Star Wars stuff, and okay. I ask you to... 
you know, uh, put a use design, use your imagination, yeah. all that good stuff. Okay. Is this something that uh, you pitched to Disney, or they approached you because no, you they, had had experience? They approached me because they had seen my um, Ewok book, Shadows of Endor, that I had done for Dark Horse, yeah. and they um, they liked my work, so they approached me, and I said, yeah, sure. <laughs> Is that okay? And how long uh, were you working on the, the first? So on on this one? Yes. On this uh, one. I, the whole thing was probably like a year. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's fun because you, you came up with the prompts, or they delivered like, oh, we want this many. They gave me a couple examples of like the kind of thing they were looking for, but I I did the rest. Yeah, I came up with. And what's what was so fun about any, that? Any was, bizarre or memorable Star Wars scenario you can you could come up with made it into the book in some form. Right, and they. What was fun, mostly, what too, was I had to kind of come up with the prompts, and then that had to go to Lucasfilm, and yeah. they had to kind of go through and see if it was Star Warsy enough, or if it was if it contradicted anything or anything like that. Um, right. And because people care a lot about that right. sort of thing. And I'll give you I'll give you one example. So one of the. Um, prompts in there was uh, the emperor originally it was the emperor lifting his robes and it asked you to draw his feet and they said can you pick a different character with a robe because we want to keep the emperor scary so it ended up becoming a royal guard so I just basically put a helmet on him and he's still lifting his robe and you have to draw his feet, so. Yeah, pretty cool. Things like that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I wanted to see what the Emperor's wearing under there, you know? So. I'm sure a lot of people have thought about it at some point in their lives. Yeah. Maybe they had a little too much to drink, who knows? Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, what about some of your other work? Uh, I picked up um, your Macbeth book, which I guess you're sold out of? I am, yeah. Okay. Um, can you tell me a little bit about uh, Stratford Zoo, the Romeo and Juliet version? Sure. So, Stratford Zoo Midnight Review is a graphic novel written by Ian Lendler, drawn by me. Uh, basically, the premise is that animals at this zoo break out of their cages at night and put on Shakespeare plays. Yeah. So, the first one was Macbeth. This one is Romeo and Juliet. Okay. And it's, it's, it's funny, it's for kids, it's got a very Muppety vibe. But yeah. it is very true to the original stories, you know, it's just sort of adjusted a little bit, but nothing's really removed from the, from the narrative. Okay, so it's still intense, it's just with animals and a little sure. bit more humor. Right. Okay. Um, and uh, how did you get involved in that project? Uh, that, um, have, have you wanted to work in Shakespeare previously? Or no, it actually never occurred to me. That was something that first second approached me about I had done a book for them called Broxo, which was a um, one of my creations that I wrote and drew, and that came out in 2012. Yeah, it's about teenage barbarians and zombies. Uh, unfortunately, or fortunately, I'm out of books to show you. I can show you my now it's summertime. <laughs> yeah, Beck actually has a copy of it, but I've yet to read it, unfortunately. Then get out. <laughs> So they 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 put that out in 2012, and um, yeah, and afterwards they asked if I wanted to do these Shakespeare books, and I said yes. One year. Fantastic. That's how that that's how that went down. Okay. And I want to ask you a little bit about uh, Galaxy of Super Adventure. Yeah. Um, how I, I I've only listened to maybe four or five episodes. Um, what's you guys schedule like? It's just whenever everyone has free time, you get together. We have notions of having a schedule yeah. and that rarely happens because yeah, yeah I mean, we're the, the quality of the actual podcast is so high I feel like no one could possibly complain that it's not released <laughs> regularly well that's really like good when you do get something it's like a gem yeah but um it, it's I, I was just curious um, if, if you guys did have a schedule because uh, like I said uh, unfortunately I, I haven't been keeping up with it it's, it's strange it's one of those things it's like I know I'd really enjoy this so I want to set time aside for it but then you find you don't set time aside for it yeah um, and I'm sorry about that I, I, I am a big fan of it that one um, so uh, you guys are usually filming that at, at night or just whenever you guys it really is like whenever we can 
figure out the time. Um, you know, there's it started off with three of us. And now yeah. it's four of us. Yeah. Um, one of which <laughs> is, is Lucy. Is Lucy yeah. who's on the West Coast. Yeah. So we have to account for that time difference. Um, and just sort of whenever we can get time to sit down and record. Uh, but then, you know, the recording is part of it. But then there's also the um, the editing. Which yeah. also yeah, takes a long time right. because is that yeah. mostly Jersey doing it? Jersey does the editing of the discussion, mm -hmm. and I do the editing of the sort of the theatrical bits. Okay. So you know, lasers and yeah. the spaceship sounds. Lasers and spaceship sounds and characters coming in and out of the spaceship and, and music and things like that. So, and that can take that can take time, especially because when you're trying to figure out um, how something sounds, you know, you have to listen to it and you have to listen to like the whole thing through so it's like that just takes time where you yeah. just have to spend the time listening to it yeah um, so we're trying to I mean we've talked about ideally we would love it if we could start making a little bit of money from it so that we could hire Professional somebody editors. to just do the editing and then we could you know just have put fun out with it just have fun with it and and put out put out episodes more frequently sure but yeah well like I said I don't think anybody's gonna begrudge you guys for not releasing on a regular basis just I hope not thankfully we haven't heard anything like you know hey man where's the next you know there hasn't been any anger so yeah. that's well it's a free podcast so. right um, so who's coming up with the themes for the shows it's just you when you get on the call hey what do you want to talk about today or um, is there a soft script no we um, when we started we um Ben Jersey and I actually sat down and sort of came up with a list of possible topics. Yeah. And then when we were recording, it would be kind of like, well, what 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 topic do we want to talk about? You know, it's like, oh, you know, this is on my mind. Let's talk about this. Yeah. Or, you know, I'd love to do that. Or so and so expressed interest in being on the show. I think they'd be really good for this Talking topic. About this particular time. Yeah. And that's actually how Lucy ended up on the show. Uh, we did a show about fear, yeah. you know, creative fear, and thought Lucy would be really good. And she was. She was fantastic. And then um, after a while, we were just like, can you just be on the show permanently? And she thankfully accepted. So yeah, <laughs> that's how that that's how that happened. Okay. And can you tell me a little bit about your uh, work process? Are you mostly working digital at this point? No, I do everything by hand except for coloring. Okay. Coloring yeah, is digital. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking because your your inks in the uh, Macbeth comic that I was looking at definitely look like they were traditionally done. And yeah. I've seen a lot of your traditional work last year at the um, the gallery opening, uh, and I thought that your pages looked phenomenal. Oh, thanks. Um, <laughs> Uh, so you're you're doing your coloring digitally. Is that mostly to save time, or because it's uh, expensive to use? Uh, what do you usually color with markers? Or um, if I'm doing coloring by hand, it's going to be probably a combination of watercolor markers, okay. that kind of thing. The digital coloring is mostly a time issue. Yeah. It's mostly a because um, there's such when it comes to comics, there's such a volume of of work. But yeah. it's also because uh, most of the time I'm actually not doing my own colors. Someone else sure. is. And so they can be coloring while I'm still drawing. So these colors were actually done by Alyssa Harris. Yeah. Um, you know, I sort of, we, we talked and I kind of set the palettes for a lot of stuff. Um, and, and they were able to replicate your work yeah. pretty, pretty fairly? Yeah. Quick. Okay. Um, uh, so there wasn't any. Uh, Becca hasn't actually worked with um, a color center work. She uh, colors most of her stuff herself. So there's yeah. no special sort of procedure for getting things colored. You just basically color a couple pages and then say go off and do it like this. Depending on the project, depending on who I'm working with. Um, like I said, like we'll talk about well, what do we want? You know, the color atmosphere, you know, to kind of be... Yeah, so you might build palettes for scenes? Is that... Right, or I might say, you know, I want this scene or whenever we're in this location to be kind of gloomy. And then they might do a palette and say, well, what you know, what do you think of this? Because, you know, okay. they're, they're artists too, and they, they their voice has to be in it too. So it's not just like... 
make this red and this blue and that's it. You know? Yeah. So it, you know, well, certain I, licensed properties will do that sort of thing to you. Uh, Becca's actually worked with some stuff that you have to sign an NDA with that they were literally like, if you don't use these colors, you're not going to get the work. Right. Yeah. They give you the Pantone. You know, <laughs> yeah. list. It's like it's got to be this yellow and this green. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. But it, it's good to hear that. I mean, colorists also get to express themselves in some ways because yeah. a lot of people that's their job. They just color things, and it would be shameful. If colorists are the unsung heroes of comics. You know, I mean, they do such a bulk of the work, and it's such necessary work. They're they are very. Um, underappreciated, yeah, I think. Sure. Yeah, Courtney Hahn and Becca Hilburn were talking while we were walking around yesterday uh, about how things would kind of fall apart in the comic book industry if flatters went away because it's like, you might not think about like what they're contributing to a project, but yeah. boy, are they important in that pipeline for making a comic. <laughs> for sure. Absolutely. <laughs> Okay, and is coloring something that uh, you find you're missing in uh, existing projects, or you're, you're no. producing work? So I, you're I, I, I'm, I'm happy with letting other people color color my work. Um, it's uh, yeah, because it's a lot of work, and I also, and frankly, I also feel like there are people who are stronger with color than I am, and sure. so I'm, I'm happy to, you know, let them make my work look better. <laughs> yeah. Okay, would you have any advice for artists who are considering tabling at uh, uh, A2CAF for the first time? Um, I would say something that's, that's, depending on kind of what stuff you have, um, it's good to have things of, like, different prices, because... If you have, if everything you have is twenty bucks, yeah. Sometimes, you know, you'll get people buying stuff, but also sometimes people are looking for stuff that's like three bucks yeah. or a buck. Or an artist so, is walking around and wants to buy from a lot of people, and if you yeah. only have twenty dollars worth of things, they're probably just going to pass on you because right. they could support four other artists. <laughs> yeah. With that money. So I think it's good to kind of have like a range of of things. So yeah. That's sort of. That's my serious, advice. Serious. <laughs> That's a piece, one piece of advice. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, and where can we find your work online? Um, Other I than am just at, at Amazon and <laughs> right, yep. comic book shops around all, the world. All that stuff. Uh, my website is ZachGialongo.com. Uh, this particular comic is uh, a comic that I've been posting on Instagram called Crater and Nine. Okay. About a robot and a dog on an alien moon. And uh, so cool. you can go follow Crater and Nine on Instagram. And uh, this is the first time that I've printed any of it up. It's basically kind of like the first chapter. Yeah, so it's intended to be a webcomic? Yeah. All right. And uh, hopefully, you know, I'd like to color it and package it up and make it look nice. But right now, I'm just using Instagram as a place to post it and get it done. Okay. And what got you? Uh, what got you want to go back to, to producing? I guess on license things. I I just I needed to do it. I needed to do something that was just my idea. Yeah. How long has it been so since you said 2012 again. was? Um, uh, yeah. Brocko? Yeah. yeah Broxo was in in 2012, and uh, it's all been licensed stuff or you know again like Shakespeare. Yeah. Since then, which so. is, I mean, not technically licensed, but a, a property that exists that you can't stray too far out of the boundaries of. Right, exactly, exactly. Okay, well, thank you so much for attacking, talking to us, Zach. And, um, <laughs> I didn't attack anyone. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I mean, I didn't attend the award ceremony, so that remains to be seen. But um, <laughs> maybe you thought you deserved something that you didn't get. And I'm sure that there's no rowdy. tape of that. Okay. Well, it was great talking to you, and yeah, I appreciate you, you um, uh, just doing everything for the festival and talking to us sure. and letting people know uh, what they can expect when they come out here yeah. uh, coming up 2018. All right. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.